for letter D, we wish to show that they agree that you know the one we did agrees with the graph in part D. Now this is our part D. Okay, we this is what we are mostly interested in this y of 3 which is f of g of x now what is our domain for the f of g of x our domain is 4 to 7 so let's take a look at this graph here for f of g of x look at our domain here our domain is actually contained in, in this uh, portion from this line up to this line and we are very interested in in this portion so that portion is from 4 to 7 which confirms our domain for f of g of x here oops that's too big so this one Okay, I need a lighter one. This, okay. And for our range, our range here is from 0 to 6. Now let's take a look at our graph D here. This is our graph D. And our range, as you can see, it is from 6, okay, to 0, which confirms to our new range for f of g of x which is from 0 to 6 so that confirms our this confirms all our computations for domains and ranges of f of g of x now let's go to letter f the same example let g of x is equal to x minus 3 and f of x is equal to negative 2x plus 8 for g of x our domain restriction is x in between and including 2 and 7 and x is from 1 to 5 on and for f of x is from x is from 1 to 5 so first we have to get our equation for g of f of x so we begin with our f of x what is our f of x here our f of x is equal to negative 2x plus 8 so negative 2x plus 8 so our g of f of x will put as 2 uh, negative 2x plus 8 minus 3 so that's equal to negative 2x plus 8 minus 3 which is just equal to negative 2x plus 5 that is our new equation for g of f of x and so that will give us this equation negative 2x plus 5 so that's negative 2x plus 5 and now we are concerned with getting the domains and ranges of, of that g of f of x okay what is our domain now our domain for g of x is equal to uh, x from 2 to 7 and our domain for g of x or f of x rather is from 1 to 5 now we want to get the domain of our g of f of x so what did we do a while ago we have to plug in the f of x function into the domain of our g so negative 2x plus 8 should be plugged in to the domain restriction of g of x so from 2 to 7 and of course we have to get rid of the of the 8 there and we just have to we all we want is to get the expression 
for the interval of x. So we have 7, subtract it by 8, and the same is true with our 2, uh, add negative 8 here, or subtract it by 8. And of course, the middle term will be also subtracted by 8 to get the 8 gone. Okay, so we will now have negative 2x in between negative 1 and uh, negative 6. So we are going to divide this 3 by negative 2 to get only an x term on the middle. Okay, so we divide all of the terms here by negative 2. So we have here 3 and x and this is 1 half. Notice that when you divide anything with a negative, if we divide anything with a negative, take a specific look at the, these portions here. If we take the, if we divide the, the terms with a negative number, then this, this uh, term also, I mean this symbol, the sign, okay, this, the, the sign will also change so that our new domain interval now will be from one half and three. So that's our new domain interval. Now let's take a look at this domain interval x in between three and uh, one half and see if they coincide with the domain restriction for our f of x. So this is our domain restriction for our g of f of x. And this one, the one I'm writing, is the domain restriction for f of x. So x is in between 5 and uh, 1. And doing the real number line again, okay, we'll get the real number line. So we have here, okay, I need the deeper line, I mean the deeper color, okay, this is for this one, and let's write, this is, okay, the domain restriction for our f of x, this is supposed to be our f of x, and this is our g of f of x. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is our 0. 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I chose the same interval for our uh, domain restrictions. Now the domain restriction for f of x is equal to uh, x is equal to 1 to 5. So it would be here. Okay, I, ne I need the green, green color. So 1 to 5. So it's from here to here. And so from this one to this one. The domain restriction for our g of f of x from the computations that we did is from 1 half to 3. So meaning it's from here. Okay, from this line. Okay, from, from this line up to 3. So from here to here. And let us have, okay, the interval notation there. So 1 to 3. So notice that we have, what do we have here? Okay, we have this common interval from uh, this, this portion, okay, this portion. So, we're just 
concerned with the common intervals here. So it goes to show that this is our common interval. Let me highlight that. Okay, so our common interval is from 1 to 3. Therefore, our domain now would be from 1 to 3 only. Okay, so that's x from 1 to 3. Now let's involve the range here. If our x is equal to 1, then our f of or g of f of x is equal to 3. So we get 3. And if our x is equal to 3, then our y would be equal to negative 1. Therefore, our range would be from negative 1 to 3. So our range here, actually it's not really important in this question because it doesn't uh, need to find the range, but for uh, the graph purpose, we just want to involve it in here. So it's from negative 1 to 3. And let's see if, if this domain and range agrees with our equation or our graphs in part D. Let's see it. This is our part D. Now this is our uh, y fourth g of f of x. And uh, the domain there, as you could see, is from, what is our domain here? From 1 to uh, th this uh, factor here. So from 1 to 3, right? So it confirms with our domain computation for g of f of x, which is from 1 to 3. And our range is from negative 1 to 3. Now let's confirm that. Our range is from uh, here. It's actually from here, okay? I overlapped. So from negative 1 to so it confirms also with our computation for the range. In summary, in summary, okay, what do we need to do to compute the domain for f of g of x or g of f of x or f of f of x? For f of g of x specifically, first thing that we need to do is to replace x with g of x in the domain restrictions of f of x, uh, showing you that g of x should be in between the uh, domain restrictions for f of x. Whatever that x1 is, whatever that x2 is, this should be, the g of x should be put in between those intervals x1 and x2. Number two, we have to isolate x in the new domain restriction. So if our g of x is equal to x plus 2, and if our x2 is equal to 7, if our x1 is equal to 0, then how do we isolate this 2 here and just get what we need, which is x? So we have to subtract this by 2. That goes also for the other sides, okay? Negative 2 plus 0. So in this case, we have negative 2 is equal to x. We now have a sole representative x in the middle, and this one is equal to 5. So we have a new domain restriction. But that's still not the... It is not the end yet, okay? This is our number 1. This is our number 2. And lastly, to find the intersection of the new domain restriction with the domain restrictions of G. So if our domain restriction for G, for instance, this is our number 3, and our G of X is equal to X plus 2, and then we have a domain restriction, for example, of 1 and 5, in between 1 and 5, or and including 1 and 5, of, of course. So we have to intersect 
or to get the, the intersection of the, that domain, this domain of uh, g of x with the new domain restriction for f of g of x. And our restriction for f of g of x in this case is equal to negative 2 x 5. So just if you want to draw it in a real number line, you could do so to illustrate it further. Okay, we need the real number line. So we have the middle here. 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we'll name this from 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7. For the first one, we have, this is for f of x. Um, I'm sorry, that's for g of x. And this is for f of g of x. Okay, so our g of x restriction for the domain would be from 1 to 5. So from here to here, and the domain restriction for our f of g of x is from negative 2 to 5. So we add two more here, negative 2, negative 1, so it's from here and here, and just get the intersection. So we get the intersection here, the intersection is from here and here only. So that's our new domain restriction. Okay, doesn't mean that when you get the domain restriction by uh, plugging in g of x to the restriction of our f of x, then you will get the new domain restriction for f of g of x. That's not the end. This is not the end. You have to get the intersection between the domain of the g of x and the f of g of x. So the domain here would be, in this case, the domain would be the domain of f of g of x would be equal to x in between one and five. So that summarizes our lesson for getting the domain calculations for f of g of x. Now the same is true with getting the domain calculations for g of f of x. In that case, you replace x with f of x in the domain restrictions for g of x. And isolate x in the new domain restriction and find the intersection of the new domain restriction within the domain restrictions of f of x. Thank you for watching.